Welcome back. You're now tuning into the other side, the other side of sports. It's your host, Laws in the building. We here is me, is D, and it's Aaron in the building, rocking out. You already know. Got a lot of stuff on tap. We're going to get into all the uh, uh, Dan Snyder, Roger Goodell, that whole debacle. My man was going to the, uh, ca- the uh, cash fast loan shark type battles. We're going to get into all that. Uh, in a minute but for starters we got the question of the day question of the day comes in been married for 10 years now and my husband confessed that he has thought about leaving me in the past he makes all the money and i'm i am disabled and stay at home and stay and am a stay-at-home mom i look to see what happens where i am in the event of a divorce like who gets the money? And I saw something that scared me. Apparently, the first thing that is done is all the accounts are frozen. This would mean that if he does leave me, I'd be screwed with no access to money. If it has me worried that I could be homeless or not have a cent uh, to my name for food. So I apply for a credit card. I was surprised that they gave me a credit card with a limit of $1,500. I don't plan on using the card unless for an emergency. Since then, my husband has reassured me that he will never, ever leave me, even though he has said this, that before, and and he's thought about it. And now I kind of feel guilty uh, for, for having this card without his knowledge. I have never kept anything from him in our entire relationship. What should I do? Should I tell him about it or keep it to myself? Ah, that's as you tell them that could that could actually have him go out the door, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's the part right there. No, I should try to get some insurance, though. Ah, man. Fifteen hundred. Let me just tell you something. Fifteen hundred dollars a- only gonna last you a week and a half, though. You gonna fill your gas tank up one time. You gonna get two dozen eggs. That junk gonna be gone. So. If you're looking for security and a fifteen hundred dollar credit card, let me just tell you, you're not gonna find it, champ. That's the first thing. Like, that's not gonna be enough. You can't stay in a hotel three nights on that. So, yeah, that is a low. Yeah, you can may, maybe go to the uh, Super Eight joint or something like that. Cause Dollar Tree. So, <laughs> cause this is Dollar Tree, man. Ain't no got no lodgings, man. That just gets you. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean though, but that. That situation is difficult to, the fact that she only got a $1,500 credit card lets me know that her credit ain't nothing. And <laughs> so that lets me she know. She got right kid here. credit. She got high school students. That's what I'm saying, man. That's what <laughs> And this day and age. You can buy a bike and some, some groceries. That's about it, dog. Go 1500 So. So she really relying on this guy's income. Yeah, he and been, she yeah, doesn't he have basically anything. take care of her. Right. Yeah, she's basically a child in his house so i wonder is that part of the reason why he said what he said i don't Mm -hmm. know if it's a lack of appreciation for all that he's doing and him Mm -hmm. saying that type of thing i i don't know man because that's the type of thing that you know most guys want to get some type of affirmation for for the all the work that they're putting in and the basis Mm -hmm. she's only able to get a 1500 dollar credit card that you know right there that she doesn't have much of anything on to her name. Yeah. <laughs> Why you her, help her, dog. Help her. D beat me to the punch. She said, "What do I need to do?" I was gonna say, "Improve your credit." If you getting them <laughs> approved for fifteen hundred, that's the subprime joint. That's the mer- the Merchant Bank or what's the other joint? The Fake Capital One joint. The Credit One joint. Yeah. That's, that's the the bottom of the barrel joint. So. First thing you need to do is get yourself in order in case you back out here in the world again. Second of all is if you married to the Batman, he's been paying everything, you're going to get some type of funds. For sure. I don't know if y'all got kids, but you're going to get alimony and then uh, mm-hmm. child support if y'all have children. So she, it just sounds like she is just that panic to go apply for a credit card. That's not even the, the best route to go. If you're gonna need some type of financial yeah, back, she secure housing. And- <laughs> she just sounds childish in the mind, like she has no clue how the world works, um, or how money works at all. So, she mm-hmm. might need to ask that Bama what he need to stay, and uh, <laughs> get herself in order. 
Yeah, that's the that's the. Good, I don't know if if he would be open to doing marital counseling and things of that nature. If they've done it, have it, you know, if they haven't, or just a way to kind of really talk about and discuss the things that they're struggling with on both she, sides. She need to do the Dave Ramsey money makeover and figure out her financial mindset because that jump. But that's it's, it's not good, man. That's something you get when you in college. That type of credit. That's the type. Of that it? You got to pay it back. It's not like it's free money. Right. It's a credit card. Yeah. You can pay twenty seven percent on that fifteen hundred. You can be paying that drink for thirty years if you don't have no income. She probably so, need to keep it for education. She should have went purposes. and applied for a job instead of a credit card. That's what she should have done. <laughs> but she disabled, so I don't know what level of her being disabled. Oh, yeah. It's that's disabled people work at the Walmart. They they disabled people can work. Nah, for sure, for sure. I don't know what level to what her disability is. That's that's what I'm saying. She now. probably don't want to work. Stay at home, like that's her fingers thing. and eyes work fine when she was logging on the uh, <laughs> CreditOne.com and applying for so the credit said, card. So you saying she can sit online and take take uh, phone calls from a she call can do center? Something job. Though. I see disabled people working and functioning like full, you know, like full adults every day, though. Yeah, that's a fact. That's true. Yeah. And she can write the show and ask questions like this. And she married and all this other stuff. Does she a functioning adult? She need to talk to her husband, man. They need to have a serious conversation. Yeah, they, 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 they definitely For, do. They real definitely talk. Do. And they got to be bad because men don't leave. That's the part. Yeah. I mean, we'll stick. I mean, we'll stick around for to you know be tried and true. We're not the ones that typically just roll out. Right. Unless Amazon go hit the streets and cheat and do other stuff, but he ain't gonna leave. When right. Bama leave, it gotta be, it, it gotta, gotta be something crazy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of leaving, though, is is Goodell? Sorry, I already I spoke too soon. Is Dan out of here? Dan said is that report it? was fake news. What? The FBI not looking into to his uh. He said he never his, asked uh, him to do that. He never asked him to. Uh, to cover his legal obligations and all this other stuff. He said that just fake news. Oh, hold on, hold on. This bad my Dan is, I don't know if y'all watch Billions. This bad my I used Dan to love that like, Dog, the show is great, dog. Bobby Axelrod versus Mike Prince. This is the base, this, this is, this is, I'm telling you, this is a response to the other day, Bezos being locked out of the uh, negotiations you to be able know. to bid on the team. And so he was like, oh, all right, really? Okay, I got you. And then they just, you know, they tit for tat right now. But apparently the league, because, you know, this report came out today, 55 million, this Bama going to uh, wefixmoney.com, getting payday loans. Without so this is the question say. I had. His house was like, they said like 40, not, was it 44 million, 49 million, something like that. I was wondering, is this his mortgage loan that they talking about, or is this some loan they saying he doing through the team? So they saying that the Bama been using the team to like do a bunch of like side money stuff to put money in his pocket. One of the things that was in the report was that Dan Snyder would like put basically charge four million dollars to put in his pocket by putting the Washington Commanders logo on his private plane as advertisement. Just like little stuff like, like that. Stuff? Yeah, funny business. So apparently the FBI government, they looking into the, the financials. Bama had double books. The uh the minority owners that, that own 40% of the team, apparently back in 2021, they basically asked about this $55 million loan and was trying to get to the bottom of it because they were like, hey, we didn't sign off. And then the paperwork that was supposed to get uh reviewed to basically make it a legit was nowhere to be found and guess whose signature was on the on the paperwork because i guess if the team is if a team owner is trying to do something with the with the bank roger goodell gotta be like as a represent representative of the the team i mean of the league basically to give his blessing so apparently his his signatures was on the stuff so then they did an arbitra- uh, uh when the minority owners sold the team, they did like a backdoor arbitration me- uh, mediation jump to basically get the shares up off them. You know, it, it's just a whole bunch of funny business going on. 
To me, that doesn't believe? sound like funny business. It sounds like billion dollar stuff that regular Joe Blow people don't understand. And okay. so people can like journalists can take things that people will never experience in their life and make it sound egregious or make it sound fishy. Like rich, rich Bamas, they do stuff like that. Like they'd be like, okay, I'm going to get the put the logo on my plane and then I'm going to write that joint off to the business or had the business mm-hmm. pay me. Like that's just what people who own businesses do. A way to mm-hmm. finagle a little bit off the top. It's just like a contractor mm-hmm. going and buying lumber and then charge you 10% markup. on it. It's just they always doing little stuff like that. Money hungry people, that's just how they operate. So nothing mm-hmm. I heard make me say, oh, why? is he paying the loan? Did he default on the drink? As long as the Bama paying it, the bills. They talking about the Bama strapped for cash. He out here... Money but strap for cash like- is different in his scenario than strap for cash. That's just a terrible phrase to me for this drink. Okay. Strap for cash. Like he probably trying to you know he wanna get the stadium built, and that's one of the reasons why mm. he uh this kind of put him in a scenario when they bought the league essentially paid the minority owners out for Dan, and so Dan owes the league, and so he can't pay that drink and build the stadium, and that's why I kinda They've angled him to kind of push him out. But at the same time, dog, like, the Bama's a billionaire still. The Bama probably got hun- hundreds of millions of dollars in assets outside of the Washington football team or the commanders. Bama's trying to make it sound like this nigga <laughs> at a soup kitchen or something like that is just, <laughs> it, it, it's wild to me. Is this, is part of this just, the 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 disdain for Dan that the, the fan base here just wants to see just punishment come his way. I mean, this story was a national story that was written by ESPN, so it wasn't like necessarily like uh, local media that that had a hand in it. But, but you know, there's a lot of people who just do not like Dan Snyder and want to see something happen to him, though. Like. They was talking on the radio, talking about the, all this pressure and all these doors closing in, walls closing in, going to push Dan to the brink where he just going to want to leave it all. He's a hermit. Right. He's not – like, this Bama is not outside at all. I don't think he cares at all about any of this stuff that's going on. The one thing that Bama said that kind of got to him was when they booed his wife, and that's when you first started hearing <laughs> about him talking about sell a team. But people have been hating him for 20 years. That's I think right. legal ramifications – might put pressure on this Bama, but all of this hoopla about the fans hating him and wanting them gone, he don't care. He let water with piss fall on people's head in the stadium, all of a kind of, he does not care. Lost the checks no. clear, this man does not care. This is the million dollar question. Will Dan sell the team or will he not sell the team? Will he be here come August? August, what's, what's this month? We in, we in be March. March. About to be March, yeah. <laughs> I think he would to me for he him to six lose, months? to me that for him to lose that team, it was something he would have to be forced to do. I don't think he's gonna do it on his own volition. I just don't see that in his mentality. Is there a amount of money that's especially gonna get him not for five seat? bill? Yeah. What's the they, amount that's gonna get him that's gonna make him say, okay, all right. What he told y'all, seven bill. Hmm. Seven he bill. told y'all one time, y'all keep asking and rephrasing the question. <laughs> And people come with low offers and y'all want to re-ass? He told you, seven. People are saying that the franchise not worth seven because ticket sales are down, all the debacle with the team. That's a BS <laughs> lie. It's about that's, the market. That's it's about, about, about the market. Yep. If, no, if the, you, if can't the, buy, you can't even get a, a 400 square foot apartment in Washington, D.C. area. The Phoenix Suns sold for four billion. Too. You can get seven bill for the skins. It's the, yeah, and it's the, the bottom line, even though the team is bad, the minute the team starts being successful, all the, all those sales and everything are going to go back up to what they supposed to be real quick. That's, especially Over- when that stadium get built. Yeah, and that's overnight. That ain't going to be something like a slow trickle, you know, of, of an influx. That's just how it's going to happen immediately because it's Washington, the market that they're in. And the history that Washington has. That's why that team is still popular, still one of the highest – franchises in the NFL despite how bad the team has been the last 10 years or so 20 my bad 20 <laughs> so I don't see it changing I, I just 
to me, I don't what kind of leverage you're going to have to really have something to have him just say, all right, I'm going to sell the team. I think uh, base, oh, go ahead, my fault. No, I was going to say, and because of that, I don't see him just forfeiting that at all. But go ahead, Aaron. Oh, so just, so just for clarity, mm -hmm. it said this, it said, uh, this note from the minority owners, it revealed that a $55 million credit line to the team had been taken out 16 months earlier without oh, the, the knowledge team. and required approval of Snyder's minority partners. The three billionaires who own 40% of the franchise at the, at the time, the secret 55 million loan has become a primary focus of the federal prosecutors in Virginia who are investigating allegations of financial misconduct by Snyder and the Washington commanders. Multiple sources with firsthand knowledge of the inquiry told this to ESPN. Federal grand jury has issued subpoenas for a cache of documents related to the team's finances, including the loan. Uh, prosecutors acquired the partner's NFL arbitration petition and other supporting materials, including emails and letters between team execs, bank lawyers, documents. Um, the criminal inquiry is being led by a team of FBI and IRS agents, sources said. During a confidential arbitration, the former partners demanded that the NFL investigate the origin of Snyder's loan, but neither NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell, whose signature granted league approval for the team to take the new debt, nor the NFL arbitrator investigated the partners' allegations of financial wrongdoing. According to hundreds of pages of confidential NFL arbitration documents obtained by ESPN and more than a dozen interviews, loans and lines of credit obtained without the approval of the Washington Washington's board of directors violate the team's shareholder agreement, according to the documents. The documents also show Bank of America's officials asked the team executives repeatedly for proof that the board had approved the loan, but the team executives never turned over a copy of the board appro approval before the loan closed. And one team lawyer later pause. acknowledged... In pause, a pause, pause. <laughs> in what world... Do you just not submit documents that the bank is asking for and they close on the loan anyway? And they trying to redirect, stop it, dog. If you applying for a house and they say, yeah, we need to see your W-2s, <laughs> we can go ahead and close. And you just don't send them, they're going to close anyway? Uh, I know. No, it's interesting that all the heat is at Daniel Snyder. No, when he didn't approve the loan, if I try to go in the bank and I'm like, yeah, let me get a $55 million loan, they're going to be like, uh, excuse me, uh, they're going to want to see a lot of documentation, dog. And if I don't, if, I, if I'm trying to put my house in that documentation as an asset and that, that my wife's signature need to be on the joint and it's not, you think they're going to get it to me? If you're a billionaire, they Because that's how it works. He doing the no doc from back when the, uh, <laughs> when the housing market went under. <laughs> what they call the joint, the declared income joint. <laughs> right. So anybody can get a loan now. No doc. I ain't got to show you nothing. I just got the money, man. That's See, all that. Here, 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 here go the, uh, the posturing. Three billionaires, not a few whistleblowers, alleged to the NFL arbitrator <laughs> that, they, that their partner had possibly committed bank fraud, the sources said. This is jail time type of fraud. No, they want this Bama to go down so bad. Yeah, they hate if this it's dude. jail fraud, the Bama be locked. Like, no, if I steal fifty five million from the bank, they gonna have me. I'm gonna be talking to y'all through 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 a uh, plastic glass. I, mm. We just gonna keep it all the way hundred though. But they didn't say the Bama forged the joint. They said he just didn't provide it. So to me, is that that's on the bank? That's, that's on the a, bank's fault. Yeah. <laughs> the documents obtained by ESPN showed that the minority of partners Robert Rotham, Dwight Shakar. Uh, Frederick Smith protested the loan after they discovered it. It was a financial and a financial report and fine print. They then started looking closely into the team's finances and found Snyder was using the team as his personal piggy bank, including charging the four and a half million to put his logo on a private jet. They alleged in an arbitration petition filed. I, I, I mentioned that. Uh, counsel for the commanders and the spokesperson for the team declined to answer any questions about the fifty-five million dollar credit line. Uh, in a statement, Bromley said the team has been fully cooperating with the Eastern District of Virginia since it received a request for records last year. Goodell, Goodell signed the jump too, dog. So That's why ain't no heat coming his way? Right. There's a yeah, lot this of people. Jump, this jump sound like a 
like some fun like it sounds like a, a, a big fishing expedition dog who they got chuck rose on the uh <laughs> trying to dig into this joke bezos yeah. thought he'd done enough already and then when the bad man act like he was jockeying and not leaving he's like okay i gotta get back in dog so so here go the money part in the spring 2021 the mediation resulted in the snyder's paying his partners 875 million for their 40 percent stake nearly two years later snyder is seeking to sell the team for up to seven billion at that price the former partner staking the team would be worth two and a two and point eight billion dollars so that's <laughs> 870 million 78 million compared to two and a half billion mm -hmm. that's a big pot of change i mean you're a billionaire so they ain't really hurting but still billionaires don't like to miss out on billions not at all and and that's the part man i to me this whole this whole thing all together it seems like if they get snyder it'd be on a technicality because it seems like he was given permission to do these things that he did, <laughs> even though they may have been illegal. You know what I'm saying? No, but it sounds like they still... gift, they gifted this Bama. They done gave him the green light and let That's him do what I'm it. Saying. Yeah, you gonna give a Bama the green light to shoot every shot he want, and then mad when the Bama go five for fifty five on the court? Like what? Sub him out. That's it. Yeah, he not gonna sub himself out. I never seen a player on the court be like, "Give me a sub." Like, Unless they twist the ankle or something, yeah. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? They gonna keep, they gonna keep playing. Why you let them play? I, yeah. At this point, the fans just gotta relax, dog. The Batman not going nowhere till he gone. All this fake pressure, this jump. Yeah. I at first, Aaron, I, I was like, they, the, the, the media done gas me, dog. I'm hearing them talk about the jump. I'm like, yeah, dog. This Bama better be out of here. They they got this Bama locked in the corner. He can't move. It's getting hot. He he uncomfortable. He gotta he gotta sell the team. Now as I after I look at what they presented, it ain't enough, dog. It ain't enough. It ain't enough, especially when you got all these these uh weak points in the in the, in the whole narrative. These Bamas already got their money, though. What, what is this? Why is Virginia starting to open up and investigate? Like, to me, this smells of Bezos. Like, he called these Bamas and was like, look, y'all want some more money? We, I can help you. He's trying to force me out so I can't buy the team, and he's selling it for $2.8 billion, more than what I think it's worth. Y'all got to help me get, the, get this the franchise number down. Otherwise, he gonna come out on top. Yeah, dog. This is this is this is billionaire. This is billionaire versus billionaire. Bezos is behind the scenes. I'm telling you, it got to. It's too ironic that in 72 hours, this story came out. From 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 the last story that was saying Bezos wasn't allowed to bid on the team. I, I can't be the only one who peeped that situation, though. I can't be the only one. It's too, it's too ironic. It's too ironic. Um, some commanders news though. They they dumped Carson Wentz. They got some money back. They uh franchise tag. Uh is it Allen? Um no Payne. Payne. my bad. They, they franchise tagged Deron Payne. Uh, it, it looked like they, they got a plan, Earn. D do you trust it? Trust what? The commanders they, and their plans. I mean, I haven't seen anything that designates a plan. That was a no-brainer to put the franchise tag on them if you weren't going to be able to sign them to mm -hmm. a long-term deal. Because otherwise, you let them walk for nothing. Um, so that was mandatory. You had to cut Carson because it was what twenty six mil against the cap, um, yeah, and the to. fans can't stand them. So um, I'm gonna know that they're serious when they don't resign Heineke, or when they flush out some of those garbage Carolina old linemen that Ron brought up and get some real interior old linemen. Like that's the kind of stuff I'm waiting to see them do. Go get a real tight end. Um, mm -hmm. Go get some linebackers. Yeah, 
I mean, we 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 gonna start looking into our draft um, personnel um, in these, these next upcoming weeks. There'll be individual videos for each of the positions, and you know, I I think that we are gonna learn a lot from this draft that what 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 the direction of the team is going and what they're trying to do. I mean, uh, Eric Bieniemy was able to like hire some people for his staff, got some of his people in there. Ron still trying to. He was on a press conference talking about, you know, interviewing some of the people that Eric Bieniemy brought in and just trying to hear their philosophies and this, this, and that. You know, he, you know, he won his hand in the in the pot, though. But, um, but this that Eric Bieniemy, uh, press conference, I learned a lot, though. I learned a lot. D, did you see it? That's the thing. I didn't see his press conference. I was too busy looking at my. GN's press conference during the combat combine, but what did he say in his no, in the end? they lied to us, D. <laughs> they told her they told us the Batman the end horribly and he's the interview terrible. I'm not believing it now. That that's a that's a complete hoax and a lie. And the reason I know it is, is because an interview is just me and you, and like we just in a room and we may talk, it may be one other person there potentially right to in the interview process this Batman sitting in the front of a room full of people all different spaces he looked comfortable to me Ern d he looked comfortable mm. he sat there he said all the right things he talked about accountability he talked about being able to uh how do you you know get stamp on it on a, on a team and getting to know the guys and you make relationships he talked about complacency and things that that hurt people's growth it's just staying too comfortable dog i i literally was like bro make the batman the head coach today from the head from the press conference so whatever they tried to say was a bold-faced lie which which highlights even more just how racist the league is and yeah it's on the owners and the people who are making the decisions and the like, journalists who and keep spreading the propaganda instead of calling out exactly what's going on. They got to find every excuse in the book as to why I know it's not racism. Typical white guy stuff. Though, it, the Batman looked like he a seasoned vet, though. Ready to come in and change the organization starting day one. You had all your, you had players at the press conference in the front row, you know, look like they committed. It, it, it's, a, it's a level of excitement there with, with him. And what he brings to this team, uh, I'm I'm excited, bro. I I think we might we might have something. if Ron can just fall back and just mm. not medal. Mm. We might be we might be all right though. We might be all right. Because to me, by mid season, it's gonna show how good he really is as a offensive coordinator. But I feel like what's going to end up happening is because it hit the offense success, because everybody lo loves offense now in the NFL, because that's just the trend. You know, Ron's going to get all the accolades because of the work that he puts in. You know what I mean? No. So, so this is the thing I'm worried about, though. And and again, I said it's just like um, The Last of Us, The Walking Dead. With this franchise, it's always like a zombie lurking, though. Just like in the <laughs> background, and that you. you you might could just be living life and everything, and then the zombie just hop out the woods, jump on your back. Like that's what this function is for this team. And I wouldn't be surprised, though. And this is one of the reasons why I think it's, it's really hard for Ron because these Bamas are so dastardly. They'll be trying to self-sabotage situations in order to make themselves look good. Or like, I wouldn't be surprised, though, if they try to self sabotage the situation if the Bama's having too much success because you know if Eric B enemy goes out this jump and the offense is cooking right I'm talking about KC level cooking you already know what the what the what, what's coming behind that you already know what's what's going to be the chance at the stadium and all is everybody going to be championing for EB so I don't think I don't think people like Ron like their egos get low too. That's one of the reasons why we ain't have Cam Newton here. Cause Ron didn't want to, you know, didn't want to have Cam Newton get any credit for any kind of success that that might have might have been brought. 
Now, I mean, how you feel about that? You may be on. I about to say because you know, Cam to me was washed by that point. In my opinion, he was washed. More washed yeah. than Carson. Yes. No. At the time, because nobody knew what Carson was at the time. But at the time, he already shooting. He he already showed that he was a wash. He had some gas left, though. Dog, oh, that jump was on. It was like on that. It was on E, but he it, had it, gas left. Carson Wentz came in this jump and told us we need to get gas. And his check light, check engine light and gas tank light was on. Hey, I hear what you're saying. But I, to me, Cam, at that point in his career, I just felt like he was so... Both of them quarterbacks were no good. It's it's really hard to sit there and compare this to really and truly because they either one of them they were both ready to be out of the league. So I'm just I'll just put that out there like that. But yeah, he's split he's splitting heads. Yeah, him. exactly. So yeah, okay, all right. Uh, on to some basketball. Yeah, we ain't talk about these jokers in a minute. And um, there's been a reason why. The Washington Wizards lost to the, the uh, New York Knicks the other day. Uh, had 19 point lead. Gave that up. They they the Wizards are right now. They are in the 10th spot, two games behind the playing game. Or well, I think what the playing game is what eight, eight and nine, and then nine and ten. I mean, I'm sorry, eight and nine, and then. Seven and eight and nine and ten. Oh, seven and eight and nine and ten. So right now, they like barely hanging on to that playing game, battling with the Chicago Bulls. Chicago Bulls washed them the other day. Um, though I, I'm I'm still I'm right where I said before. If the Washington Wizards do not make the the playoffs, I'm going ham. What's unsaid needs to be. I'm sorry, bro. I know you're a black brother. I do not try to like it. it it's hurting me to do this, though. But, bro, you're you're getting close to Scott Brooks' ineptitude mm. with the subs, with the you know how bad that was, D. Yeah, I, I think threw, he's worse than Scott Brooks. Him. Oh my goodness, mercy, <laughs> <laughs> dog. He, I can't even argue you. I can't even argue you down, dog. Some of the moves and the stuff that he's been doing, dog. It is. Scott Brooks level incompetence. And I think that Wes Unsell Jr. probably is a great guy. If I met this Bama and we went to the bar, we probably chop it up and talk basketball. We probably had the greatest time ever. Just the same way Tommy Shepard, that Bama is a great guy. Like cool, everything probably be fabulous to hang out with and chill. But when it comes to running this fabulous. basketball team, <laughs> just running his basketball team. <laughs> <laughs> this Bama is inept. Yeah, the team is, you can, is is very poorly coached. It's too much talent there for you. First of all, why are you resting guys, dog? I get your star play. Dog, this ain't no time to be resting Bamas, dog. You rest them in the front half of the year so that in the back half after the All-Star break, you can put on a push. Why is Bradley Bill sitting out? Like, unless these Bamas have like real injuries, dog, this is why people be calling the NBA soft because you be doing all this low management. You too sorry to low manage. You too sorry to low manage. You want to low manage? Get up like 10 to 12 games in the East like and secure your spot where you can just kind of look low manage at, at a point. But you're not good enough to do that. Denny? I can't, dog. This it is, is what bad, it is. It it's is bad. It is. It's bad. <laughs> it's bad, dog. And the Eastern nobody... Conference is not that good either. It's so... not even. So that's the part. We could... Dog, me, you, Aaron, Tom, Rick, we could put a team together, dog, and play in the Eastern Conference, dog, and be 11 C. But I... The Eastern Conference is stronger than the West this year, though. I don't know, dog. I don't know about that. It probably was in the front half, not now. No, in the East, you got Cleveland, you got the Celtics, you got Philly, you got uh, Miami, Miami, Milwaukee, 
Milwaukee, yes. So Milwaukee at the top. You got Milwaukee, Celtics, 76ers, Cavaliers, Knicks, and then Heat. Everybody else to me, dog, is not scary, dog. Everybody else, the Hawks, the Nets, Raptors, Pacers, Magic, Hornets, Pistons, no excuses. Right. In the in the West, you got the Nuggets, Grizzlies, Kings, Suns, Clippers. Mavs, so all them Warriors. teams you named, the Eastern Conference teams got better records than them jokers. They do, but it's name they, alone. Not, it's just name alone and, and and nostalgia from the West Coast being stronger in the past. The 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 fourth seed got thirty three wins in the in the West. That would be the seventh seed in the East. Uh, okay, I will give you that, but I think the the competition is stiffer in the West. How? Huh. Because they it's it's not baseball. They playing on both sides of the league during the whole season. Yeah, but they but you're gonna play more more people in your conference than than outside of the conference. I mean, I just like if you look at the the um like yeah I. I yeah, I see I'm what just Aaron is saying. In terms, in terms of the overall conferences, the East has a stronger conference this year in comparison. Yeah, to the West ain't the year. West no more. And despite them having the the talent on the West side, but I guess to me, with Washington, even with as bad as Washington has played, they still have plenty of opportunities to still make the playoffs. With being right now the ten seed with 28 wins and then the next, you know, team is the Raptors and they got 30 and then Atlanta has 31 and they play Atlanta tonight. So it's just one of those things. There is still a chance, man, for them to make it. They're not that far behind to, to be in that, you know, nine, eight, seven seed. But when your coach is coaching off cue cards, as Aaron like to say, you go, you going <laughs> to so stay would. behind. <laughs> Sometimes got stuff a, is like got, a he nice got a story. Minute, he, got minute, he got minutes on the card, like, oh, he got to get his minutes. Yeah, okay, people right, like, It's like, it seems to me that he doesn't have a great feel for the game. Like, momentum, he doesn't have a great feel for when to use his timeouts. He doesn't have a great feel for his own roster and substitution patterns when it comes to, oh, these guys are getting it done. Let's leave them in a couple extra minutes. Oh, it's eight minutes. Got to put the other... You know what I mean? Like you say, a cute coaching off of a cue card. And sometimes things are just nice stories, like his dad played here and, and, you know, he gets the head coaching job. But sometimes I just think some of this stuff is just just like Jerry Jones, where the owner hires a guy who doesn't have the balls to say no, to stand up to the owner and be like, mm -hmm. I'm not playing this dude. This dude's better. Or no, we're not moving this guy. This guy's better. And so a lot of the same stuff they would people would – lose their minds over if it was happening on the football side of things. Mm -hmm. The same stuff is going on and sometimes worse from the day-to-day -day, like sport operation aspect of it, meddling with the roster, meddling with minutes, meddling with playing time, and nobody says a thing. Yeah. No, I mean, part of it is because the Wizards just off the radar. People not really checking for the Wizards like that, except for like hardcore Wizards fans. But, you know, I, I'm just seeing basic level decisions being made that just don't make any sense. It's like, what are you doing, dog? And, and that's that you hit it right on the nail that he doesn't he lacks the feel of the game to know when to like do stuff or like stay with a player or pull a player out or or, you know, call a timeout or, you know, it, it, it's just yeah. or say no to Ted. No, we're not doing that. Or Tommy, whoever you want to blame is the person that's trying to control minutes and, and who plays when and with what other teammates. The Bama doesn't seem to he either doesn't know his own team or the marketing department is calling the substitutions mm -hmm. and making the trades. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's bad. Um, and that the, to kind of follow what you just said, Harold, though, you said that no one's looking at Washington. But we just talked in the last segment about how the commanders, they're in a big market. Well, the Wizards are in that same market and why they're not being seen as a basketball team. I don't 
Cause, cause they ain't won nothing, though. They don't the, have, they don't have anything that they can really hold their hat on. Like when they won championships, Bama's ain't even care about basketball, though. Like in the last century, two decades, they haven't won anything. Yeah, but I, I feel like every year we talk about the same thing: a coach that can't handle timeouts and game management and being able to understand the talent that they have on the roster and it's like the same thing repetitively it's just a different person it is you know whoever you put in there it's just the same thing so like it has to be something above the coaching process because who who was hiring the coaches you know what i mean and so when you get to you know a gm situation you know is there are they doing what they're supposed to be doing in their position because you're hiring the same type of guy every single time as the head coach were they the same type of guy that they that was before here tommy is is uh ernie gruffield little brother you yeah. called it out right off the off the rip and bam was just getting mad at you saying no you gotta give him time this, this and that <laughs> and that's the problem he's been here 20 to... years that's Ain't it. nobody hired the man 20 years dog this bama to me, and that's your, why. That's your problem. It's not. Don't get it twisted. It's it's like this. It's like you being sick, and all you do is talk about you got a headache. But what is causing the headache? You know what I'm saying? Like what caused it? That's I feel like in this situation is the GM is the person that's causing the problem. It's not necessary. The coach is just a is just an extension of that. But that's not the problem. It's the GM, in my opinion. And the way he goes about doing business and hiring a head coach. And then you hiring the same type of head coach doing the same things, the same gaffes every no, single time. Because they're hiring not based upon the, the criteria that needs to be uh, uh, put into consideration when bringing the guys on. It's the other stuff. It's not winning basketball games. It's not a winning formula. These bad men try to try to convince us that the defense was going to be that much better. They still giving up leads. Yep. Oh yeah, we need a coach that's going. You know, Scott Brooks is just he's not really defensive oriented mindset. No, we right back here. This bad man's not defensive oriented either. But let me tell you what the real problem is, because I could come in there and I could have success. Only difference is. They're going to respect me. They don't respect them, dog. They don't respect them. You can see it. How they play, the carelessness in it, in it, in it, how they do go about doing their jobs. You can see frustration on their faces because they know the, you've been on the team, D. It should you've be been better. On the team, when you're playing on the team and you know the coach that's trying to tell you what to do, don't know what the frick he's talking about. You're a cooker, by the way. Let's say you're a cooker out there, and the coach don't really know what he's talking about, and he's trying to have y'all play this system. It's like, dog, that's not how the NBA, that's not how Bama's winning the NBA. And you know that's not how they win because you play with these Bama's in the offseason, and they tell you how they go about winning. And the worst part about that is when you a cooker and you know which teammates you play the best with or the are are the best teammates and they're not getting on the floor and you know politics is involved like you know what goes on you know the conversations going on behind the scenes and guys checking out yeah oh and, and once bamas don't believe that they got a chance with you though it just reflects in the game it reflects in the decisions that's being made you know these bamas already seem comfortable with losing yeah it's once a, a team it's, is comfortable with losing it's over it's done and it's a cultural problem that's been in washington for a very long time and, and it seemed like bamas who not okay with losing they ship them out of here and it's bringing a new loser right it's bringing a new loser dog they want all these bamas with great attitudes that's all i hear through the whole broadcast oh this guy he's one of the greatest guys you could ever be around he's just a really good upstanding guy just it's character it's, it's just this all, all, all because the Bama Gilbert Arenas brought guns in the locker room. They had Javar's <laughs> Crendon. Like if you mention the Wizards and you be like, "Yeah, tell me your most fun Wizards moment, dog." I'm gonna tell you, they gonna name two moments. They gonna name the moment when uh, Gilbert Arenas was at the free throw line and LeBron James walked up to him and said something to him in his ear. 
and then the other situation they're gonna name is when the Batman was in the in the in the uh circle dancing with the guns in the sky. That's what it's known for. And so now because of that, they like we gotta get these good guys that just you know boom boom boom, but we wanna lose, dog. Hey, Aaron, you know, like I know the best Batmans who cook the best are the most reckless, like knucklehead type Batman. Every time. The only exception is Steph Curry. Everybody else That's just, <laughs> is a loose cannon. It's a loose cannon, dog. That's you, it. And you got to have a coach that's, that's going to be able to get the respect from those type of guys to be able to even coach them. Because the minute that's something it. goes wrong, bro, that's it. You don't, think it, you don't think it be no head case? You don't think James Harden the head case? The Bama's is head cases, dog. They are. You don't think Jimmy Butler a head case? Yes. Oh, just go down the line, dog. Maybe the Batman's and and uh and at the Celtics, they seem like they 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 got good heads on their shoulders, but cross Jalen Brown wrong. I hear did jump out of pocket too. Kyrie, head case. We can go down the line, dog. But those have you have to have a coach that's gonna be able to Work with those type of guys, yeah, man. We don't have that. Like man, we got a soft cookie. Who they should have hired? Four straight coaching cycles. <laughs> yeah, I forgot <laughs> about that. The next coaching cycle, San Cassell gonna be up again. But they, he good. like to do Eric B. Enemy like the Bama. For some reason, it's like they. I don't know if they can't control them. They don't feel like, or the Bama is too close to the players, and, and not a, a company guy. But they just refuse to get his Bama an opportunity. It's sad. They're going to keep losing, dog. And I'm, I'm telling you, I haven't forgotten. I'm going ham. These Bamas don't make the playoffs. I'm Kirking. And it's, it's going to be directed at two people. Tommy Tommy Gunn Shepard and uh, Wes Unsell Jr. Y- y'all better do something to get out of my crosshairs because I'm coming. Uh, LeBron out for two weeks, dog. The Bama yeah. fell down the other day talking about, I heard it pop. Yeah. Is that his Achilles? That bad my old. Is it two weeks? Is he going to be back in two weeks or he just. Is it going to matter? Right. No, I think the league is was poised to do Stern's orders for them Batman's, though. I think they was poised. When they got Westbrook off the team, it seemed like a dark cloud left. And then the league started like, oh, well, we might have the Lakers. Lakers is a, a story franchise. You know, people are always checking for the Lakers. So. Mm-hmm. If, if they in the mix, I mean that's good for business. That's good for the NBA. Yeah, for sure. And you have LeBron James, so yeah. and, and he broke that record. Yeah, and he got all this history with him. Mm-hmm. So you know, you know that the whole goat conversation. I mean, it's not it's not really a conversation for us, but I'm just saying, like, you know, it makes for good fodder around the, around the campfire, you know. Yeah, I think LeBron is. It says his right foot, but they didn't say he had an Achilles. Cause they no, anytime a Bama land on the ground, talking about I heard it pop. What the heck are you talking about, dog? I feel you on that. Cause that's only one thing that that makes that type of sound. Unless you now he ball. did he did finish the game though. But that's the part though. He wouldn't have been able to do that. Yeah, nah. If it's Achilles pop, that Bama would have been sat, sitting down next to me. Cause Even I know exactly what it what it what happens, dog. But he did look a little ginger after it, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah, he we did let out the stadium. So. Two weeks. That's almost the end of the season. Two weeks. That's what he's going to do. He's going to play in the playoffs, and now it's all going to fall on. Uh, if they get to the playing game. So they're they the going to need some help. They're going to need some help. Yeah, where Anthony Davis is going to be the, the focal point. Man. Uh, okay. Anything else, though, we need to talk about today? <sighs> Yeah, Followers. We, yeah, we don't talk about baseball, so no. Yo, yeah, no. yeah, they got the shot clock on baseball now, dog. <laughs> Joker's Joker, Joker upset about that, yeah. Joy. They got a shot clock? Yes. Yeah, yeah. On the so pitching. You can't be. 15 can't, seconds, too. That jump is quick. Yeah, you can't it be in the data box. Because that's the thing. Because I always felt like baseball, that's why I could never really watch it, because it was a lot of Fandango. It was more of a. I need to go it's, up to the batter slow. box, shake shake my hind quarters a couple times. Yeah. I got to do my Velcro about twenty times, undo, make sure it's yeah, all tight and all that stuff. It's 
they they getting rid of all that type of stuff. They get I think eight seconds now, so you ain't gonna 15, get all that. Fifteen on the clock, and you ain't getting all that time anymore. Cause it and it made the game a lot faster. So I think it went from like three hours and I think twenty four thirty minutes to now two hours and some change or forty. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's significant. That's a significant man. change in the day. So yeah. March Madness coming up. We going we going to go through the bracket, couple of weeks. Um, check out check out our videos for um, the draft. Y'all watching the combine? Yes, sir. I am. Yes, sir. We here. This is my season, man. Of the year, man. It's combine. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, listen. The best analyst in the world, right here. The best analyst in the world. You gonna see? It's a couple of naysayers out there. A couple of haters. A couple people. You, no, you ain't the best. We, we the best in the world. We the best to do it. Um, Unbiased. I say that much. Yeah, we the best to do it. Um, we gonna have the videos up. We, we as soon as we get off here, we gonna chop it up and figure out that 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 schedule for that stuff. Uh, follow us at OSS 980 at Other Side of Sports. Shout out to Wiz Buffy. Shout out to Lance J Radio. Shout out to Jenna Garcia. Sports Talk Tasha. Um, shout out to my man Wes, my man uh, Chris, Dan, everybody who rock with us heavy. We out.